Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. So this week I'll be finishing off the animatic for my Futurama project, which is me animating the first few minutes of a fan film written and voiced by Dave from Blended Planet. And if you're new here, I've been showing the process I've been going through over the past few weeks, so take a look at my Futurama playlist to catch up. And do subscribe to follow along with the actual drawing and animation stages in the coming weeks, as well as tips and tutorials for using OpenTunes. So last week I sketched out the basic timing of the animatic, putting in some ideas for the layout of the backgrounds and characters, and if you haven't seen that, take a watch now from the card above, or watch it afterwards from the link in the description below. In it I cover a lot of what I'm doing and I explain why. But this week I'll be finishing it off. And you can see me doing so in the background here. And there's a few things I wanted to do this week. The main thing of course was to complete the animatic, and I won't show all of that here. But afterwards I'll be doing some housekeeping ready for putting together the actual animation, showing you some tips that you might find useful in your own animations, so make sure you stick around for that. And to help as usual I've got links to each different section in the description below, so take a look down there if you want to jump around. So what have I done in the final animatic? Well one thing I didn't do was to tidy up my drawings. I'm happy that it looks messy, and as I said last week I can see who each character is and their placement on screen and that's all I need from this animatic. But one thing I wasn't happy with was the professor just standing in the doorway when he first chats to the gang. So I had him walk across the screen to get to his chair. And then there was the general staging. There's a lot of talking heads in this section, and after watching some more Futurama episodes, they tend to have more wide shots of the groups when they're all together, so I wanted to integrate more of those as well as varying the close-ups to try and keep it visually interesting. And last week I skimped on adding backgrounds, and I didn't really change much of that today, but I did add a few items to make them clearer. In particular we are Morbo and Linda in the TV studio, and with Lur in his palace. And on a separate layer I drew a quick overhead view of the conference room just to help me position everyone and the background. So this will help me when I come to drawing all of the backgrounds. Now it may turn out that I should have drawn more of the backgrounds during this animatic stage, but I think I'll be okay? We'll find out when it comes to the main animation stage. So doing all of that I completed the animatic, and I've rendered out a copy, which I'll share with you, but more on that later. And as I said, I've also got some housekeeping I want to do before I can start the animation. First, I want to disconnect the camera from the animatic, so I can use the actual camera on the final animation, but I don't want to lose this camera information, so that while I animate I can see where I wanted the camera to go, based on the animatic. And next I'd like to see the animatic as I'm putting together the actual animation, and I've got a plan for that. So let's do those two. So before I started this part of the changes, I took a copy of the project so I can always refer back to it later, and that was to literally just copy the files from the project into another folder. And it's best to get used to making backups this way, just in case you change your mind, or need to get back to the original for some reason. So firstly, let's sort out the camera. And that is disconnecting the viewer's view of the scene from the actual camera column, and it's really easy to do. In fact, I'll be using the old technique that I used to use to operate the camera. So what I'll do first is I'll create a vector level to hold this new virtual camera. I'll make sure you name the column, because you'll be using that soon. And in this column we'll draw an outline of where the camera actually is. And for that we'll use the geometric tool using the rectangle shape. And I'll change the colour to a bright red so it's really clear what we're looking at. And then I'll extend this level through to the end of the animation. So that's frame 986. We'll do that by right clicking on the drawing cell and choose repeat. Tell it to go up to frame 986 and hit the repeat button. So that lasts to the end of the animation. And then we'll move the animation keys from the camera to this new virtual camera level. So if you select on any key in the camera level, right click and choose select all keys in this column. So all the keys for the camera are now selected. And then you simply use the copy and paste or cut and paste shortcut. That's Control X. And then move to frame one and Control V. And now if you move through the animation, you see the red virtual camera 
follow where the old camera used to be. But if you change to the actual camera view, you'll see this new column doesn't actually affect the camera. And if you set your scene up this way in the beginning, you'll want it to actually change the camera. And to make it do so, you go to a schematic view, or bring up the stage schematic panel by going to the Windows menu, Schematic. Then all you need to do is to connect the virtual camera to the actual camera by dragging from the red outpoint node of the virtual camera into the blue input node of the actual camera. And now as you scrub through the animation, the camera follows the virtual camera's movements. So instead of making the edits using the animation tool in the camera column, you simply make the edits in the virtual camera column. And they'll affect the camera while it's connected on the schematic. And if I thought about it earlier, I'd have just used this technique instead of editing the actual camera, but it's not too much effort to move it here. So I just need to update the other three scenes with this. So now that animatic's finished and I'm ready to start the final animation, I want to make a couple of changes so that I can see the animatic as I complete the actual animation. And this is to help me keep my timing and staging matching the animatic as much as I can. And so I don't drift from my original plan for the animation until I choose to of course. And yes, I could have the rendered animatic video file open while I animate to visually compare the two, or to run two copies of OpenTunes so I could compare frame numbers to keep them matching. But having the actual animatic within the same project just feels like it'll work better. So that's what I'll do. And this is something that I think you'll find really useful in your animations too. So my plan is to move the animatic drawings away from the actual camera's view but in a position where I can still see them and still have the columns on the X sheet, so I can see the frames that the drawings are on, which will help me keep my timing. And what I want to do is to move my sketches from the camera view using the animate tool. Now I'll just lock the east west option so I can't move it left and right, and I'll drag the sketches up away from the camera view. But when I do this, you can see that only the sketches move, and I need the virtual camera to move with them, and also it'd be nice to have a background. And as it happens, I'd already added a plain background column, and this was just to give the rendered video a background behind the sketches. And this is just a vector level containing a filled rectangle, slightly larger than the camera. So to make this background column, the sketch column, or columns if you have more than one, and the virtual camera move, we need to connect them all on the stage schematic. So if I undo that movement to remove that key, change to my schematic view, and first I'll disconnect the actual camera that I set up in the previous section as that will be used for the final animation. And you do that by just dragging over the line connecting the two nodes, it highlights in a turquoise colour and then press the delete key. So I'm going to hang all the nodes off the background column in the same way as I connected the two camera columns. So I'll move that camera column out of the way. And I'll connect the sketch column to background again by connecting the right hand side of the background column to the left hand side of the sketch column, the same for the virtual camera, the right hand side of the background to the left of the virtual camera column. The room layout column doesn't need to move with these other columns, it'll move independently, so I'll leave that alone. And now I've got a cell selected in the background column, I'm on the animate tool, I'll lock the east west, and if I drag the background column up, the sketches and the virtual camera both move up at the same time. And if we scrub through the animation, you can see that the virtual camera will still show its movement relative to the plain background, so you can still see your plans for it. And if I want to, I can move the room layout to the side, so that's also visible, but not in the main camera's view area. But I'll turn that off for now. And if you want, you can fold the background and camera columns so they don't fill up the X sheet, simply by right clicking on one of them and choosing fold column and you expand it by clicking in the header there or you can click one column and hold control and click the second column and then right click and choose fold columns the same for the room layout we can hide that so now we get a simpler view of the X sheet but we've still got all of the information available while we animate and we can leave the animatic here and refer to it as we need to zooming in and out between our live animation and the animatic but there's one more feature of OpenTunes that we can make use of that you might not realise you can do. And that's the fact that we can have more than one viewer 
independently viewing different parts of the scene. So open another viewer from the Windows menu. So go to Windows and choose Viewer. And you can resize it and zoom in this viewer to the animatic. And likewise you can resize and zoom your main view to the actual animation. And you can flip the main viewer to show the full view as it is here, or just the camera view, or the effect view, and it won't affect the animatic viewer. And when you play your scene, or scrub through it, they'll both show the same frame, so you can see your original plan in the animatic while you animate. And as I've got a second screen, I can put the animatic view on that screen and refer to it as I animate. So if I just move that over here, and then transition to my second screen, now as I work on the actual animation on the main screen, on my second screen I can see the animatic showing the contents of the frame I'm working on and showing where the camera should be. So if I scrub through this or press play, on my second screen I can see the animatic playing at the same time as the main animation. So that's the animatic fully drawn up today. I'm prepped for drawing up the actual animation next week, and as the same as last week, I'll share the full animatic, including the audio, on my Twitter feed. So follow me there at Darren T Anims if you want to see what the story will be and how the rest of the animatic plays out. But next week I'll be actually starting work on this animation on scene 1, the intro framing of the Planet Express building. So I'll see you then. And that's a Darren T.